Hi guys and welcome to part 64 of Skyrim Mod Sanctuary. In part 62 and 63 of this series I covered only werewolf mods and I still have quite a few werewolf mods I would like to show you however I have decided to cover a variety of mods and just add one werewolf mod each time. So for this video I'm going to start off with a great mod called Skyrim Immersive Creatures. This is a mod that adds a lot of new creatures to Skyrim, um, but these are not creatures that are out of place, these are creatures that really do fit the Skyrim setting. There are quite a lot of new creatures, creatures you will have never seen before, but there are lots of variations on familiar creatures as well. This mod actually merges in a lot of other creature mods, including one I've covered before called Beast Skeletons. And it contains all of the creatures from another mod called Armored Skeletons and the Walking Dead by the same mod author of the, as this one. This mod adds a lot of different creatures, and I do mean a lot, a lot of different variations as well. Um, the, it boasts over 1,500 variants. Now, a lot of these are subtle changes, are subtle differences. So there are a lot of different Draugr. They, they have slightly different statistics, slightly different look and feel, um, slightly different level. There are various different skeletons. There are a lot of new ghost types. So, for example, Ghost Dwemer, which is an interesting twist. There are some incredible new types of creatures, including dwarven robotic dragons, which are, I mean, they really do fit the game, I suppose. Um, it is distinctly possible that the Dwemer knew of dragons and created robotic versions of them. This mod adds varieties of existing creatures, for example, wolves, bears, and spiders. There is one particularly unpleasant looking spider, and in fact, there is a skeleton version of the spider that is very disturbing. There are some humanoid variants, and there are also a number of giant variants, for example, the fire giant. There is also a minotaur, which is enormous. There is a new creature called the Draman, which is a dragon man, I guess. There are a whole range of these coming in variety of colours, shapes, and so on. Now, there is even a large skeleton version of this creature. Now, I am not totally sure how law-friendly these creatures are. Um, I have seen them, this type of creature, in various books including an old fantasy series called Dragonlance, um, where they used dragon eggs to create these abominations. So I suppose it is reasonable that some evil wizards took dragon eggs and somehow mutated them into these dragon men. But the important thing for me is that they don't seem out of place. They don't look out of place. Although, strangely enough, there is also a Dwarven Construct version of these as well, which is very cool. There is a rather interesting type of creature called the Chorus Swamp Warrior and the Chorus Swamp Hunter, uh, which are sort of very insectoidal humanoids, and I do apologise if I am saying a Chorus incorrectly, I am not 100% sure on the pronunciation. There is even a bit of a blast from the past with uh, appearances of some old favourites, the Golden Saint, for example, and the Winged Twilight, and if you liked the Shivering Isles expansion pack, the Dark Seducer has made a return. And the sheer number of variants on the Undead theme is absolutely amazing, from things like the Undead Thalma Soldier, uh, to one of my favourites, which is the Draugr Raglord, there are so many to choose from. The Draugr, Skeletons, just so many. And in fact, there are so many variations in this mod that you'll be discovering new creatures for a long time. This is a great mod for me. A lot of variety, the models are great. Uh, everything just seems to fit the land perfectly. Big thumbs up. I'm really, really looking forward to discovering more and more of these creatures on my travels. 
Now, I promised you a werewolf mod, and a werewolf mod you shall have. One of the things about being a werewolf is, after you've transformed into beast form, gone on a rampage, killed whoever it is that needs killing, eaten whoever it is that needs eating, you turn back into human form and find yourself as naked as the day you were born. Except, of course, for the loincloth, because apparently even werewolves have standards. And whilst this is very understandable in one way, it is a little irritating. Now, I'm a big fan of immersion, and ordinarily, I would say appearing out of werewolf form naked is immersive, it's realistic. But all it means is that you have to quickly go to your inventory and quickly put on your gear. It means nothing else, really. It doesn't actually demand you do anything. It doesn't demand anything from you. And it doesn't actually give you a penalty worth talking about. I mean, if, on the other hand, what, it, what werewolf form did was make you drop all your gear where you transformed, and then after two or three minutes of running around in werewolf form, you blacked out and woke up in a random farmyard somewhere, naked, and without gear, and then had to make your way back to where you transformed, then it would be a penalty worth talking about. And then it would be a penalty worth keeping. And until someone makes that mod, I am afraid all it means is when I finish with Beast Form, I have a minor irritation of having to go into my inventory. It forces me to acknowledge a game mechanic very unimmersive actually. So the mod I'm going to show you very quickly because there's not really much to it is called Werewolf Aftermath Reequipper. It is a very simple mod that takes note of what equipment you are wearing when you transform into the beast and then when you transform back once more it reequips all those items without you having to go back into the inventory and do it all manually. Simple, easy, and very, very convenient. Now, I am using the Frostfall mod. And the Frostfall mod, well, it makes weather something you pay attention to. So when you're in a cold area, you dress up warm. And when you're in the rain, well, you try to avoid getting wet. Because getting wet will make you get cold faster. And there have been several times when playing this game, I've often thought to myself, what I really need <laughs> is an umbrella. And look what someone made. That is right, somebody has made an umbrella for Skyrim. Now, the model is actually very cool, and it's held exactly as you would hold a torch. Um, so you don't even have to have your weapon out, just like a torch. You hold it in your hand, um, and there you go. Now, the texture looks a little woven for my liking. I think I would like to see a leather or a hide texture for this, uh, an oiled hide, to make it look waterproof. And if at all possible, I think I would like it to, I don't know, tilt a little further back so that the... Because if you look at it, the center is not quite over my head. And so I'm going to get rain dripping down my neck. And, of course, <laughs> the biggest problem with it right now is it actually won't do anything if it rains. It is uh, It doesn't give you any resistance to the rain whatsoever. But I intend to have a quick chat with Chesco to see how hard it is to add this to his wear system to give you 100% resistance to rain. This is probably not the sort of thing a Nord Barbarian is going to want to be seen dead with. Uh, but for my erudite librarian, the Breton here, who prides himself on rationality beyond anything else, this may well actually be a really good idea. Oh, and because it technically classifies as a shield, you can actually keep it up whilst fighting. <laughs> and even block with it, although it does look a little strange, especially if you bash block. But you know, 
put maybe some razor sharp edges on it. I could imagine that doing rather a lot of damage. <laughs> now I realise this mod is definitely not going to be for everyone. There's going to be a lot of people going, you are kidding me, an umbrella. Um, <laughs> but I love it. I think it's a great idea. I really would like to get, the, get this integrated with Frostfall. Um, and if I do, I'm probably going to be using it every time there's a storm. Brilliant idea. Installation of Skyrim immersive creatures is not difficult, but there are a few steps. At the time of making this video, there are two main files. There is version 5.1.1, and there is also a release candidate of version 6. Now, by the time you're watching this video, it is possible that there will only be one file. However, for now, you're going to need to download both of them. Once you have downloaded them, activate the main file first, that is the Skyrim Immersive Creatures, and you will get a nice installer. Now, I'm recommending the ESP version. There is an ESM version, but I'm not 100% sure why you would need it. But I can tell you, if you want to try version 6 release candidate, you need to be using the ESP version. So I'm going to click Next. I have Dragonborn DLC, and I'm using the ESP version. And then finish, and it will install away. Once that has been activated, activate the release candidate 6. Obviously, if that's no longer available, if version 6 has already been released, you don't need to do this. Click no when asked that horrible question. And now you need to click yes to all when asked to overwrite. Now, if you are using Skyree, you need to run the reprocker again. So I'm going to take the Skyrim immersive creatures and the DLC file and put them above the reprocker files. Now, I would suggest using boss to sort your load order first. That's always a good idea but then make sure the reprocker files are at the bottom. Once they are, you're going to need to rerun the reprocker itself. So go along to Skyproc Patches and run the reprocker jar. This is important because it will make some changes to the Skyrim Immersive Creatures that will keep it in line with Skyrim. But that's it. Now you're ready to play with Skyrim Immersive Creatures. The Werewolf Aftermath re-equipper is actually very simple. Download with Manager and activate. Nothing complicated. And the same is true of the Umbrella. Single file, download with Manager and activate. Dead easy. Anyway guys, that's it for this video. We're going to end as always with some screenshots that you guys have posted. Um, if you want to post screenshots, I will leave a link down below. You're more than welcome to post them. I try to get as many as I can on each video. They're really great, way better than I could do. So I do appreciate you guys posting those. I hope you found the video helpful and enjoyable. If you did, remember, please click the like button. I always appreciate that. And I look forward to seeing you guys for whichever video you decide to join me for. And until then, as always, have fun. Oh, the king, oh, the king, oh, the king, oh, the king.